Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Let us continue with the discussion on kinetics. In the last class, uh, we have understood what is the requirement of this problem. We will have to find out what is the maximum acceleration that can be tolerated by the system so that these bottles do not tip. And uh, so, the question is to find out the maximum acceleration. And we need to put the free body diagram of the bottle and we have to investigate for tipping, okay. And we have learnt in statics how to investigate for tipping and uh, it is easier to take the coordinate axis uh, parallel to the conveyor belt and perpendicular to that. And uh, in this case, it is a self weight of the bottle that contributes to tipping and it is given in the problem where the CG is located. It is about 80 millimeter from the bottom of the bottle. So, it is put uh, approximately here and uh, you have the weight acting on this mg cos 20 and mg sin 20 we can put it like this. And uh, you also have the acceleration of the mass point. And this is where you have to investigate for tipping to be prevented, the resultant force should be within the bottle. So, the limiting case is you put it at the edge. We have already seen that it is going to tip like this, that is what we are anticipating it. Since this diagram is complete, you are in a position to write the appropriate equations. And it is desirable that we do it at point A. And this is nothing but an arbitrary point T. Okay. So, you are going to invoke this equation summation of mp equal to ig alpha plus mass into acceleration of the mass point and the distance d. All the parameters that is required are given. And this is the problem where the, you know, there is no rotation. So, I g alpha is 0. So, you write m a equal to m a bar into a t and write what is the value of m a. So, you will have a contributing force from this and you will also have this force contributing to this moment. So, that is all the problem is solved. I have mg cos 20 into 35, mg sin 20 into 80, that is equal to ma bar 80. So, that gives me the limiting value of acceleration as 0 0.67 meters per second square. See, it is a very nice problem, it is a very practical problem where you have the packaging industry when they want to fill some liquid. If they want to increase productivity, you have to apply mechanics and find out what is the maximum acceleration that the system can tolerate. Otherwise, the functionality would be lost. And it is a nice problem which brings in your understanding of how to analyze whether tipping will take place or not. And this is also an arbitrary point. In order to remove your mental block, I can have any point labeled with any symbol. In the discussion, when we develop the equations, we call the arbitrary point as p. The po point p can be a in this context. So, you should be able to apply these equations comfortably when the labels are also changed. Now, 
then we move on to another simple problem i have a wheel of weight 50 kilograms and diameter 500 millimeter rolls without slipping that's a very important statement on an inclined plane at 45 degrees the wheel has a centroidal radius of gyration of 200 millimeter see i have coined the problem in such a way that i don't want you to spend time on calculating the mass moment of inertia i directly give you the radius of gyration the focus is on learning dynamics not on calculating mass moment of inertia and get stuck if friction is sufficient to prevent slipping compute the frictional force f acting on the wheel during its downhill roll also compute the minimum coefficient of static friction to prevent slipping and this is fairly straightforward problem and you know rolling is general plane motion fine and the moment you look at rolling you are expected to remember the kinematical conditions that you have learnt earlier you know you need to remember certain quantities it is unavoidable and rolling is such a common uh, uh, phenomena that you will come across in many applications you are expected to remember the relationship between the mass point velocity and angular velocity as well as mass point acceleration and angular acceleration you are expected to remember these quantities and it says wheel rolls without slipping when it rolls without slipping these quantities we have learnt earlier you are expected to remember and use it if you don't remember derive and use it okay and we have the important relation that mass point acceleration is nothing but r into alpha and when i have the axis as x and y i could also label this as ax and here you know from the physics of the problem that c is the instantaneous center of rotation so i can apply center of rotation as the point for me to do all the computations and make my life fairly simple and you are given the weight of the disc and at c you will have an interaction of normal force and the frictional force will oppose the rolling motion so i have this as the frictional force i label it as f so the diagram is complete including the rotation as well as linear translation acceleration components so it's ready to be solved so identify the governing equation we have m o equal to i o alpha that is what we are going to use for this problem and this becomes point c here so i rewrite the expression as summation of mc equal to ic alpha and uh, you have to use the parallel axis theorem to get the value of ic you are given ig and uh, then you can find out this okay so i have this expression satisfied so i am in a position to get what is the value of angular acceleration from this so the first step is i am in a position to get the angular acceleration and you have utilized the kinematical relationship for a wheel that rolls without slipping so you are expected to remember these quantities while solving problems and the next equation i can write is uh, sigma fx is equal to m a bar x and we have uh, already seen a bar x equal to r alpha and alpha is given as 16.92 radians per second square so you have the basic equation written it's very straightforward please check the arithmetic 
and this gives me what is the frictional force that is acting on the wheel so that it rolls without slipping. So, it makes your life lot more simpler. If the wheel rolls without slipping, you have the kinematical conditions and you are in a position to invoke those interrelationship and solve for this problem. See, the question also asks what is the minimum value of uh, coercion of friction that you need to have. I can also write the other equation F i equal to m a bar y that is equal to 0. So, that gives me what is the value of uh, normal force and uh, I know what is the value of uh, frictional force that is required. So, that gives me I should have a frictional coefficient of 0 0.39 is required so that the wheel rolls without slipping. So, friction aids, friction is needed in many many applications. When friction is significant and its role cannot be ignored as engineers we bring in. Until then we solve problems without friction that is how engineers make the problem solvable. Okay, you get the first hand solution, maybe apply a factor of safety and then design criteria to do your design rather than complicate your problems with all aspects of the physical system. Okay. Then we move on to a very interesting problem. See, I want to give you the feeling whatever the knowledge that you learned in this course is of use somewhere that we have come across recently and it is very interesting to see our uh, Mars mission was a success because uh, we had been able to do this in our first attempt, very first attempt. And in fact, the NASA probe that was uh, revolving around Mars welcomed this uh, Mangalyan, they sent a message. So, that is a proof, there is somebody watching there that you have reached Mars. Okay. So, the problem here is, see the satellite is in an orbit like this and if it has to go to Mars, it has to take another orbit. And what is to be done is, you will be surprised that when you reduce the velocity, it shifts to the other orbit. And there are the various steps, you know, you have the blue line, you have the black line, you have the orange line, you have the green line, you have a slightly uh, this kind of indigo color. Okay. So, you have uh, definitions for all these stages of uh, the craft. So, they have to align the satellite and then fire it when communication is not possible from earth. That is what is shown as the black strip. And once you reduce the velocity, it gets locked into the Martian uh, orbit. So, it all involves uh, quite a bit of uh, mechanics calculations. Fine. And uh, so, this is the spice to the problem. So, I have a satellite uh, which is spinning and we are going to look at when there is an onboard uh, thruster which reduces its velocity because it is moving in this direction. When I fire it, I am applying a force this way. So, I try to reduce the velocity of the satellite. Then it is in a position to shift the orbit. So, that is the physics behind it. So, the problem statement is like this. So, let us also feel, we will solve a simple problem. We also take credit that we have also done something to do with Mangalya. So, to lock into the orbit around Mars, the velocity of the satellite needs to be reduced. This is achieved by firing an onboard motor controlled from Earth, which has a thrust of 450 Newtons. At the time of firing the motor, the satellite is traveling velocity of 4000 meters per second in the y direction and spins with an angular velocity 5 radians per second. The mass of satellite is 400 kilograms and its radius of gyration about z axis is 900 millimeter. The axis are shown already in the problem. 
I have axis x, y, z attached to the satellite and you are also shown a point A which needs to be looked at. The thrust motor and the point A are on the rim of the satellite as shown in the figure and it is at 1.5 meter from the spin axis. So, you are given all the particulars. You know, this is a very nice problem. It brings in your basic understanding of how do you write the velocity equation, relative velocity or relative acceleration equation from one point on a rigid body to the other point in a rigid body. If you are attaching a non-rotating translating axis, you will see the other point as if it goes in a circular motion. So, all those memories you have to bring in back and then handle this problem. So, the parameters are given which are very clear and simple and you have to recognize that the satellite is spinning as well as having a linear motion and originally it is traveling at a velocity v naught in the y direction. So, it is spinning counterclockwise and this is the angular velocity and you have the thrust motor attached here. So, when it is started, it is going to create a thrust and that needs to be put and it is labeled as O, there is nothing but the mass point. See, we had specific connotation while we developed the theory, we have always referred the mass point as G, fixed point as O and arbitrary point as P. So, you must come out of that symbolism and learn to apply the correct equation to the symbols given in the problem. It may appear trivial here, but people get confused when they write the examination. So, I have this and I have the onboard the thrust motor introduces a thrust that value is also given in the problem. So, it has a angular motion as well as a linear motion. Let us look at each of these. So, when I have this, obviously this is going to create a deceleration like this. Okay. It will also reduce the velocity, it will also reduce the spin speed. And you are given what is the acceleration A naught. Okay, angular motion we will look at. I have m naught, this is nothing but uh, mg equal to ig alpha, this is the mass point of the satellite and you are given the radius of gyration. I can easily write what is mg, only this force introduces that moment and I have alpha equal to fr by mk square. I have all the parameters given. So, when I substitute, I am in a position to get the angular acceleration or deceleration, whichever way you want to call it. This is 2.08 radians per second square. Now, let us look at the linear motion. I have uh, Fi equal to Mavi. and we are given uh, the coordinate axis. With respect to the coordinate axis, I can also put the sign of the quantities and all these uh, quantities are given, F and M are known. So, I can find out A naught and A naught as 1.125 meters per second square. The idea is what is the values for the point A that is what is asked. So, here this is a rigid body which has a general plane motion. I sit on this body, I know this absolute acceleration. I need to find out what is the acceleration of point A. So, go back to your uh, kinematical relationships and write down the relative acceleration equation and you should be in a position to write what is well, uh, acceleration of A with respect to O relative acceleration equation and this is nothing but it is rotating and we know the direction of omega and alpha. 
So, it is easy for you to write this component from the previous calculation we have got this a naught and you also assign the sign appropriately. So, we know a naught what is acceleration of a with respect to o. I have the tangential component dictated by the direction of alpha and I have this uh, normal component. So, I have this normal component is r omega square j and tangential component is uh, minus r alpha i. So, I have these quantities. So, it is easy for you to calculate what is acceleration a. I have the value as minus 3.12 i plus 36.375 j meter per second square. Second, a very interesting problem. You try to use whatever you have learnt in kinematics and you have learnt to apply it and you have got the values that is asked in the problem. Yeah, now there is a rage, everybody is looking at the internet and then whatever that comes in the internet, whether it is right or wrong, you jump onto it and then do it, okay. And I thank my students who have collected these details and uh, you know, it is very dangerous. You cannot simply open your uh, car door and then dance and then somebody films it on a public road and it tells you the history of development. It appears uh, the car started moving somewhere amidst the internet noise. Initially, the proponent has not asked the car to move and what is the mechanics part of it? We are interested only in the mechanics part of it. What happens to this poor door? Okay, that is what we need to analyze, fine. And uh, before we move on, let us also see how Indians have modified it, okay. And it became a real challenge to the Indian police. So, the advice is please do not do any of these challenges, fine. It is all going to hurt you and my focus is on what happens to this door from mechanics point of view. So, you have warnings from Bengaluru city police, Jaipur city police and so on and so forth, okay. The idea is not to do this, but look at what is the mechanics behind the problem. So, this is what you have. It is not exactly the same problem. Please write down the problem. Inadvertently, the door is kept open and it is decelerating. And what happens to that door? It is a very nice problem. You take any book on uh, mechanics, they would have a car with a door opening. So, in the current context, I thought that I can uh, spice it up by bringing the kiki challenge. Okay, do not do any of those challenges. Uh, publicly circulated in internet, many of them are injurious to you, okay. So, you are given the weight of the car door and you have very nice animation which gives you complete visualization of what is happening so that you can understand the problem statement better and look at the strategy to solve the problem. And uh, we have to compute the reaction forces at the hinge of the 36 kilogram car door when theta equal to 45 degrees. The car decelerates at a constant rate of 3 meters per second square. The radius of gyration k naught at the vertical axis of rotation, you are given only at the axis of rotation. This is the axis of rotation, you are given only k naught is given as 500 millimeters and the mass center r bar is 400 millimeters from the vertical axis of rotation. You are given all the particulars of it and uh, let us go and look at how do we handle this problem. Let us understand the motion little uh, systematically. I could think of this as a linear motion, then followed by a rotation or I can think of a rotation first, 
and then the linear motion and reality both of it happen together that is what happens i have rotation as well as linear motion takes place that's what we call it as general plane motion so you have a reasonable appreciation of what is happening to the door and you should also recognize to start with how the door was what was its angular velocity all that is hidden in the problem fine that is what you have to look at that is why i have put you this animation you have a very important clue it starts from rest so the omega is zero it starts from zero angular velocity and it acquires a finite value of omega when it reaches 45 degrees you should recognize all that only when you recognize all that you will be able to use the appropriate equations to handle it so the door acquires angular velocity and opens up as the car has a retardation so that's the first observation that we make out of it door thus has angular velocity as well as angular acceleration and this is what is shown you know i have a door which is very nicely shaped fine but as engineers when you want to do an analysis you simply take it as a rectangular unit and i have the radius of gyration if once i have the radius of gyration i don't need any of its shape fine how we model a practical problem into a solvable problem so i have this as a rotation about which it takes place and you have to investigate what is this point i have labeled this as o we saw point o as a fixed point you have to ask yourself is it behaving like a fixed fixed point or something else fine just because the problem statement says it is o don't conclude anything out of it you must investigate what is the motion so i have this door i have this angular acceleration i have the location of the mass point the distance is also given so you have to recognize the whole door has rectilinear deceleration so the point o is not fixed it is having an acceleration in this case it is deceleration because we know the direction of the acceleration it is coming to a stop so you have to treat this as point p in our calculations and what i have so i have the acceleration shown here which is a deceleration from this problem context the door is in general plane motion that's what you have to recognize you have to recognize it is in general plane motion and once you draw the neat sketch and put the quantities arithmetic is fairly simple there is no difficulty at all in arithmetic so i have a hinge so when i have a hinge what is the way i will do it i will assume two components because i do not know the direction of the force i represent it as component in the x direction and component in the y direction and an unknown force can be taken in any way the general recommendation is take it along the positive coordinate axis my mathematics will come and tell me whether this is right or wrong all those principles you learnt in statics are equally valid in dynamics there is no alteration here okay and uh, we have already looked at how to write this uh, relative acceleration equation for a rigid body and i have uh, what are all the components of force that act at uh, mass point i have ma like this and then i have a normal component m r bar omega squared and a tangential component r bar alpha like this so my diagram is complete so it's easy for me to write all the quantities that i require so taking moment about vo we have already seen that is actually arbitrary point p in our theoretical development you should not lose track of it that's very important 
you should recognize that the point is not fixed in space even though labeled as vo it is having a acceleration or deceleration whichever way you look at it so m not equal to i i have you are given k not i need to get k bar square plus uh, r bar square so this is a hinge so it has to go to zero so i have uh, minus m k squared alpha plus m r bar alpha r bar i write all the components okay i write all the components m a r bar sin theta and we have uh, alpha equal to a r bar by k naught square sin theta you should recognize that the point o is in reality point p it's not o in our theoretical development so labels can be misleading in a problem and you cannot put restriction on a person who is coining the problem to use your symbols to label it and we have already discussed the door starts from rest so it has a omega is zero to start with it acquires angular velocity because of the motion and this expression you have learned long back in your uh, particle dynamics so you are using that here so integral zero to omega omega d omega equal to integral zero to theta alpha d theta alpha we have got the expression from the previous uh, step and then when you do this i get omega squared equal to 2a r bar by k not squared into 1 minus cos theta and uh, theta equal to pi by 4 we have to get the calculation so i have this and finally i get the value of omega as 2.86 radians per second is the idea clear it's a very interesting problem and uh, it's quite dangerous you should not have any door open in a car while it is moving in fact the modern cars have sensors if any one of the door is not locked it gives you a beep or it gives you some visual uh, uh, indicators so you must attend to it it can cause accidents okay you should not uh, drive the car with uh, loose doors then i go to fx equal to max and uh, you can easily write this expression if the diagram is complete writing this is straight forward it's not difficult all the quantities are put you have the angle theta so i put the appropriate cos and sin theta components and uh, you substitute the relevant quantities and uh, for theta equal to pi by 4 i get or o x is like this and uh, i get the value of or o x as negative that's perfectly all right i have assumed it in a particular direction the mathematics can come back and tell me whether my assumed direction is right or wrong so you can start your problem with this and bank on your mathematics to assist you absolutely no problem so i have determined the value of r o x then i need to get r o y r o y is given like this and substitute the relevant quantities for theta equal to pi by 4 i get uh, r o y as 7.19 meters so it's a very interesting problem you take any book on engineering mechanics they would have a problem with car door opening whichever way moves in the left or right or uh, it's a very interesting problem 
and you have to recognize that the door is in general plane motion. Apply the appropriate equations. It brings in your knowledge of statics. It brings in your knowledge of kinematics, which we have learnt. All that have to be used systematically to arrive at the final answer. And when you are designing the door hinges, you need to take care of these forces so that it lasts long. So, in this class, you know, we have solved a variety of uh, problems in kinetics. In fact, if you look at the problems that we have solved, we have solved problems with translation, curvilinear translation, fixed axis rotation, mass point rotation, as well as general plane motion. So, you have a variety, and the focus was on how to visualize the problem situation and how to use the equations you have learnt appropriately. The training was also given, we have learnt it with certain symbolism. The problem may be given with some other symbolism, use your symbols appropriately and do not do it in a rush because your symbol and the problem symbol are identical. The problem symbol denotes what you have used in your theoretical development. It need not be. Thank you.